Hello. Hey, everyone. Welcome Good. back. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to Live from Your Local Library with uh, Ken Livingston and Sharonda Everett from United Way of Delaware. Um, we're just excited to be here to be able to share with you this event for World Read Aloud Day. We are so excited. How excited are we, Sharonda? We are super excited and we have some fun guests, some special guests for everyone. We have lots of good stories and books. It's very exciting. I'm very excited. <laughs> good, good. I'm excited as well for, for World Read Aloud Day. And just to give everyone some information about World Read Aloud Day, World Read Aloud Day motivates children, teens, and adults to celebrate the power of words. This global literacy movement is about taking action to show the world that the right to read and write belongs to all people. World Read Aloud Day is funded by Lit World and sponsored by Scholastic. So once again, we're here to celebrate the love of literacy. We're bringing some exciting people here, and we're going to kick this initiative off with a bang all the way from Arendelle. Now, some of you might be out there like, Arendelle, like, who's in Arendelle or who's Me. from Arendelle? Well, if you've been a fan of the Frozen movies... Arendelle is a part of the Frozen series, and all the way from Arendelle, we have Princess Anna. Ooh. Hello, my friends. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited to be here with you on World Read Aloud Day. See, when I was alone in the castle all those years, reading really helped me explore life outside of the castle gates. When I was reading, I could be anywhere I wanted, doing whatever I wanted to do. I could be a strong warrior or a mysterious mermaid or a super smart detective. But most importantly, I could imagine that Elsa was right there with me. We could go on all kinds of adventures from the comfort of our library. Now, Elsa and I love to read all kinds of stories to each other. And you can too. I like to make up all signs of like funny voices for the different characters. I just think that's so fun. So I have a little bit of time. If you'd like to ask any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll answer a few and then I have to go. I hope you're reading all sorts of wonderful stories. Good, good. While we wait for a question or two, uh, Princess Anna, can you share with us, like while living in the castle um, and you've had some time to read, what books have you been reading in the castle or, or what books do you like to read? Oh, I love to read all sorts of books about all of my wonderful princess friends. Belle has actually given me some really excellent recommendations. So I love reading about The Little Mermaid and Cinderella and Snow White. Those are some of my favorites. Uh, they sound like some of your, your sister princesses. <laughs> They're not my sisters. Elsa's my only sister. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, you got to educate me. Oh, of course. <laughs> all of the princesses, we do like to hang out and throw balls and all kinds of stuff like that. Oh, so when good. you guys were growing up, did Prince did, did your sister, Princess Elsa, read books to you? When we were really little, she read some books to me. Yeah. But then we had that whole magic situation, and she kind of locked herself away. So I had to read to myself. But now we like to read to each other. <laughs> that is so good to hear. And once again, it's so inspiring. And uh, thank you for coming on today just to share your love of reading and to encourage our viewers, our students who are watching, to encourage them to read. Um, do you have any last words that you would like to share with our, view with our viewing audience? Yes. Um Oh, I should probably go soon because I want to make sure that Olaf hasn't gotten into any trouble. <laughs> but I hope you all have a magical day of reading. And who knows, maybe you'll end up on a quest with me and Elsa in your imaginations. Thank you. Maybe. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Bye-bye. <laughs> that was so exciting. That was exciting. Who would have ever thought that we would all the way live from Arendelle, we would have been able to have Princess Anna. A whole princess. That is amazing. And good, so good. we know that some kids are watching. We know you guys are watching. And uh, we, if you do have questions about which books Princess Anna is reading, put them right in the chat. And I'm sure she'll be able to answer them for you. 
Good, good. Once again, World Read Aloud Day is celebrated globally, which means it's all around the world, um, and especially here in the United States. Our next guest is coming all the way from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, his name is Dwayne Davis. He is the director of my very own library at the University of Chicago. Uh, Dwayne is one of my, my good friends, and he's also a mentor. And once again, he helps uh, to coordinate the My Very Own Library Initiative, which we have here in the state of Delaware, which is also a partnership with Scholastic to provide free books to students. So I would like to welcome uh, Dwayne to this uh, initiative for World Read Aloud Day. Hello, Ken. How you doing? It's great to see you. Great to be here uh, virtually in the great state of Delaware. Um, it is a snowy day in Chicago. It has been snowing for 12 to 15 hours. Uh, school is in. Roads are unpassable. Uh, but it is also a great day to curl up and read a great book. So if you are you are currently in after school, if you are home, if you are on a cell phone or another device, um, we're really happy that you're here with us today to celebrate World Read Aloud Day, but also to celebrate the great work that the United Way of Delaware does uh, with literacy, uh, with communities and with families. Um, so just a little bit about just World Read Aloud Day, just why do we celebrate today? And I think it's connected to why we celebrate all kinds of days, all kinds of holidays, that the holiday is a marker, the day is a marker to say we wanna uplift this today, but it's also something where we want people to be connected to great stories and great narratives every single day. And we highlight it today to extend out to the 364 other days so we get back to World Read Aloud Day again. Uh, and also the great thing about World Read Aloud Day is that we get to celebrate it also during Black History Month. Um, and, and I think that's also a moment where everyone can connect to their own heritage, but also connect to the stories and the narratives and the people in their lives and in history um, that have sacrificed to, to make this country great, to sacrifice, to challenge ideas in this country. And, and that's what great stories do. They build community between people that may or may not be alike. They transform us and, and they, tr they move us to other locations like, like Arendelle with, with, with Princess Anna that we get to be in our imagination. We get to be in spaces and, can, and get with ideas that we may not have with our neighbors. But it also we can also reduce that space by hearing stories orally, picking up our favorite book, checking it out the library, getting it from the school, getting it through the Miles Very Long on library program, getting it through Delaware Reads and sharing a book with somebody else. So if you have a younger sibling, um, even if they are they are they are two months old and go home tonight, go home later, pull out your favorite book and just read to your younger sibling or younger cousin and that baby for, for five to 10 minutes and consider, hey, once a week, I'm gonna do story time with a younger sibling, younger cousin, younger community member, but also do the reverse. Ask that of the elders in your community, right? So, so this is a space where we wanna share stories. We wanna share the value and importance of literacy. Um, sometimes those literacies are transmitted orally. So like if you can sit down with an elder in your community, a grandparent and have them just, hey, can you tell me a story about when you grew up and how it was when you grew up? Um, I like the joke, I am of an age where we're on the internet and this might as well be the Jetsons. This is science fiction and I can be in Delaware with all of you all right now, where when I was growing up, this just wasn't possible. It would be a long distance phone call where we wouldn't see anybody and we have to put in a code and there was, and all the cord, uh, phones had cords on them, right? So times have changed and we wanna keep that heritage, remember that heritage, we wanna pass that information down and the great way that we do that as human beings is we do that through story. So the value and power of reading aloud, the, the value and power of reading aloud to someone is also about listening. And it's also about connecting and listening to understand as opposed to listening to respond. So if I get to hear you speak, I get to hear you tell your story, even if it's just telling me about your day or telling me something that happened over the weekend or telling me about three great songs you listened to or three TV shows you like to watch, when I get to listen to you, I get to be in community with you. And once we're in community with each other, we build trust. And once we build trust, we can make change. Um, so I see World Read Aloud Day 
as opportunity to see other people's humanity, but also to connect with those around you generationally through story, through narrative, and through reading aloud. So this celebration is great. I want to thank uh, the United Way of Delaware for, for even inviting me to, to say a few words to the families and communities out there in Delaware. I want to thank Ken Livingston. I want to thank Dr. Warren White. I want to thank Michelle Taylor, the, the great grand United Way Delaware team that we work with to coordinate my Marion Library there in Milwaukee, in New Jersey, in Richmond, California, in Kansas City, and in the Dominican Republic, where they're celebrating World Read Aloud Day today as well. Thank you, Dwayne. Man, you always bring so much energy, and, and you just gave me one quick nugget. Um, and even from a parent perspective and how you were talking about um, hearing and listening of the aspect of reading, it made me think that when I get my daughter from school, I always ask her, how was your day? But to illustrate what you just mentioned, now I'm going to change it up and say, tell me about your day. So that gives her the opportunity to tell me and talk to me about it rather than fine, okay, you know, and then have to pull it out. So thank you for that. And for all the people that are watching, catch those nuggets when you can uh, to help students to be able to articulate how they're feeling and being able to talk about what they're reading. So once again, Dwayne, thank you all the way from the University of Chicago, Chicago, Illinois. Thank you. When we say World Read Aloud Day, we mean it. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> and so we do have a ton of, of things planned, a lot of storytelling. And so I'm so excited that um, so many of the youth and after school programs are joining us to watch. I hope that you hear some some really some of your favorite stories or stories that will become your favorite stories. Um, and so we are going to um, kick it off to the next part where we have our special um, guests and our ambassadors um, through partnerships with Delaware's libraries throughout the entire state. Um, and we're going to kick it off first with uh, the Wilmington Public Library. And so we have um, some great guests waiting to join us. What do we have? I think you're muted. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm, I'm blue coats. Well, I, I'm actually from, there's Delaware blue coats. I'm from the Wilmington Library. Hi. Uh, how are you? Hi. Um, so I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the library, the public library. We have a branch here in Wilmington, um, the main library, and then we have a sister branch that's located on the north side. And we promote literacy through several different ways. We start with story time okay. so that we can try to encourage parents to, you know, get their children interested in reading. Uh, we do that, and we do that here in-house, in and we'll also do it out on the square, Rodney Square. We also have, um, for teens, we have a program that's titled um, We Mean Business, and it's a 10-week program, and it's about helping teenagers with life skills, with mapping, you know, career mapping, and entrepreneurship. So we do that, and that's a 10-week program. It takes place Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we also give away a ton of books. I mean, thousands and thousands of books. We give books to um, organizations like the United Way and the YMCA. We give it to community centers. We give them to um, schools. We even give them to barbershops and laundromats. Yeah, so that we do too. And then the, the last thing I wanna say about the library is that we bring in-house programming for STEM. We bring in the Delaware Nature Society. We'll bring in the Delaware uh, Aerospace Fa uh, Educational Foundation, the, the um, Art Loop, I mean, not the Art Loop, the, the Art um, Gallery. So all of those things, all of these things together, we help try to promote um, literacy. You guys are on um, source. Yeah, we did. We just had Jason Reynolds in too. We do bring, on. that's the other thing, we bring in authors and we have you know, in-house programming for that. He just did a talk, a, you know, an, an hour talk with uh, young people and about his experiences and how he writes books. Cause you know, he's written over 17 books and and he's uh, he was just so personable. And we had in-house with uh, one school, which was Eastside Charter. And then we had three schools on Zoom. 
that participated. So it worked out. So um, I just want to turn it over now to the Delaware Blue Coat Thank representative. <laughs> hello, hello. How's everyone hey. doing? Good, how are you? <laughs> good, good, good. Um, I go by the name of Angie. They call me Coach Angie. I am the assistant community coach for your Delaware Blue Coats. As you can see, Cody representing always. <laughs> All right. So Delaware Blue Coats, a little bit about us. We're a men's basketball team affiliated with the 76ers. Um, you can think of it as a minor league team uh, right underneath the 76ers. All men's basketball team. Uh, they always ask me, oh, do you play for the team? No, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little bit about the things that we do in the community. We do so, so, so much um, with our ambassador, ambassador of basketball coach, Joe Richmond, um, has done it all, has done it all from events, um, supporting the community to books and basketball. Uh, we had that opportunity today to read for Shortlidge Elementary School, um, books and basketball. And basically, it's a literacy program that we like to do, um, visiting different elementary schools, reading to the kids, giving out thousands, I mean, thousands of books, um, just to build their own libraries. And we got to make sure that if they want to play sports, um, they need to know how to read the play. They need to be in their studies. And if they want to get further in life, they need to learn how to read. So we really, really push for um, the kids to learn how to read and build their own libraries. Um, we also have open gym, all right? Free, 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 free. Yes, free, free open gym clinics at the field house, right um, at the Chase, Chase Field House uh, for kids ages five through twelve. Um, they get prizes, learn skills and drills, and you just never know who might show up. Somebody from the Harlem Globetrotters, um, a coach, a player, you just never know. So please stop by and come to our games, support, and you'll see. Cody, <laughs> just a little bit about us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for being a great community partner um, to have such a special emphasis on literacy. I know that uh, as a basketball organization, you guys could have chose anything, but I'm so proud to know that you guys thought that literacy was such an important um, area to focus on as a part of you guys' organization and mission to think to uh to reach back and to build literacy into your programs to advocate basketball but to also teach to students the importance of literacy by going out to schools and community centers and, and sharing books um and stories with them and then for every time that you guys go out to a school or a community center that you provide students with gently used books to add to their own home library so once again the things that you're doing to help uplift uh, literacy and spread the word about reading in Delaware is phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I know thank you guys for having are us. Supreme. Are you guys reading for us today? Well, we do have a book. Um, so we're both going to read. I'm going to read Who Are Your People? Awesome. All right. So as we know, guys, it is Black History Month. Um, so I'm excited to read this book because I want to know who are your people? All right, let's get to it. When you meet someone for the first time, they might ask, who are your people and where are you from? All right, I always wonder, where are my people from? Who are your people? You should always be proud of who you are. Your people were strong and smart. They dream of things not yet seen and imagine that we could all be free. Awesome book. Your people were fighters when they were told they had to leave because of the color of their skin. They sat down. That's not too nice. <laughs> Your people were mighty activists, champions that struggled for justice and equality. They marched so that people will know your life matters. Your life matters, guys. See as they march, stand with what you believe in, right? And they stood up and ran to make history and change lives. 
So important. Giving them hope. That things can be better. Your people were trailblazers who changed laws and broke records. Today we stand on their shoulders. Yeah, Ms. Camilla Harris, our vice president. Awesome. When they ask you, where are you from? You are from a land where the soil is dark and matches the richness of your skin. Where cotton and sugarcane were strongly rooted and match your strength and determination. You love this book? Yes. <laughs> you are from the country where time moves with ease and where kindness is cherished. We smile. We, we say a simple hello to our neighbors to let them know we see them. It's always nice to be nice, guys, right? Be polite to your neighbors, wave hello, and make friends. You are from a place where the aromas of cakes and pies waft from the windsills to fill your bellies with goodness and your hearts with love. Do you guys like cakes? I love cakes. Look at all these goodies. You're a product of your proverb. It takes a village to raise a child. You want to work together, right? You're from a place filled with love and hope and expectation where people rooted for you to succeed. Today we stand on their shoulders. How nice, guys. On their shoulders, you are so strong and so loved. On their shoulders, you can reach for the sky. Reach, 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 reach for the sky. Awesome. So what will dream what will you dream? And how will you change the world? Think about that, guys. How can you change the world? All right. D and who are your people? All right, we got a next book. Are you guys excited? I hope so. So we have another reader. Her name is Miss Amani, and she is ready to read to you guys. Hi, hello. Today we are going to be reading Amani and her magical fairy readers. This is what the cover looks like. This is what the back looks like. Let's start. Once upon a time, not so long ago, in the magical kingdom of Wilmingtonia, there lived a beautiful little girl named Damani. Now, Wilmingtonia was a wonderful town with lots of parks and swings and shaded trees and the most beautiful flowers you ever wanted to see. There were always birds happily singing, beautiful blue skies, and the sound of laughter from children as they played all day across the land. One day, Amani decided to take a long, magical walk through the park as she daydreamed of fun places to play. Inside of each cotton candy dream, there were magical visions of little boys and girls, dolls, toys, and fun things to do. All of a sudden, right in front of her path, she stumbled over a round ball of paper with black and white writing scribbling all over it, curious like most little girls. She stopped, reached down, and picked up this strange object. It felt hard and had sheets and sheets of paper all crumbled up into the round ball with black ink 
markings all over each page. I wonder what it was. At this point, she became puzzled and sad because she could not figure out how to read the words. She sat down in the grass and opened the ball of paper, one page at a time, trying to sound out the scrambled up words and letters. She could not figure this out. And her clouds of cotton candy started to fade away. She felt sad and confused and started to cry. All of a sudden, she heard a magical voice. It was clear, deep, almost like the voice she heard before. Why are you crying, Amani? The voice bellowed out. Amani turned around quickly to see who was speaking to her. Just as she turned, she caught a glimpse of a tall man wearing a fancy green and blue suit with a funny looking yellow tie. Oh, she thought, who in the world is he? She was really nervous now. What in the world? Who in the world? Don't panic, Amani. I spoke to you and I don't like to see little girls crying. What's wrong? Amani dried her eyes and said, I cannot figure out the scribblings on this ball of crumpled paper that I found in the grass. No biggie, let me take a look. The man reached out of his reached down out of his hand. Amani gave him the ball of paper to him. Ah, this is a book, Amani. A book? What kind of book? And who are you? Amani said as her beautiful eyes and her magical smile looked up at him. He began to explain. A book is a magical thing. It can take you to faraway places to imagine and make dreams come true. The scrambled up letters and words are trying to tell you a story. Amani quickly said, but I don't understand. So I don't know what the story is about. And she began to cry again. Now, now, said the man, dry your eyes. There is something I must tell you. I'm your fairy reader. And with, mag with my magical powers, I become a reading fairy. Every little girl and boy has one. All you have to do is blink your eye, blink your beautiful eyes and smile. Then the magic will happen. Let's try it. Fairy reader, I've never heard of that before. Is that all I have to do, Amani said? Next page. The fairy reader began to read this book. I can read the story to you. And better yet, I can teach you how to read it yourself. She looked up with a great big smile. Really, Amani said, you can teach me how to sound out the words and I can learn how to read and tell the story all by myself. They read for almost two hours and the words on the page began to come to life for her. She was just amazed at how quickly she could read with the help of her fairy reader. Never had she been so excited about the learning something new. The fairy reader nodded his head in agreement with Amani they made a fairy promise to read the magical story every day. Instantly, Amani imagined stories about princesses and happy dragons, action knights, and magical heroes. She smiled, laughed, and cheered. My life has just been changed. I feel so special now that you are teaching me to read. I want to help other children read too. After they were done reading, Amani turned to her fairy reader and smiled. Thank you so much. Books are amazing, she said. I wish all the children in Wilmingtonia and all over the world could enjoy books as much as I do. The fairy reader laughed, and he said, then it shall be. Amani's fairy reader shook his shimmering wings and waved his hands. Suddenly, Books appeared, flying down from the magical cotton candy clouds in the sky. Amani was so happy her magical dream was coming true right in front of her eyes. But how are all the kids going to read the books? She asked. I wish everyone could have a fairy reader like me.
Her fairy reader laughed again. Then it shall be. He waved his hand, snapped his fingers, and danced the nene. Hmm. All of a sudden, magically, hundreds of fairy readers appeared, one for each boy and girl in Wilmingtonia, and all across the world. Every boy and every girl gathered in a big, big circle to hear a story and receive a magical book to read with his or her fairy reader. Amani was so happy to see the men at work. From then on, Amani's magical idea will be looking will be looking over children's shoulders as they imagine and dream colorful cotton candy clouds of magical places, superheroes, and faraway adventures. When you want to read a new book, visit your library. They have hundreds of books to share and remember. Your fairy reader will always be there right by your side. I think you will be okay now. Amani, oh, just one more thing. Amani started to smile and laugh. She opened the book and started to read and read and read a magical story all by herself. Her fairy reader looked at Amani and said, I just want to remind you that there are lots of children just like you that would love to have someone to read to them, tell them a story, and teach them to read. So don't forget to pass the pages on, okay? Amani just smiled and said, I will, I promise, to read and help other children use their magical reading powers. Thanks again. And they all read magically, happily ever after. The end. Hey. Uh, Amani, don't go nowhere yet. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you for coming on and sharing your book. Now, I just wanted to, to clarify, you wrote that book, right? Yes. Yeah. What What inspired you to write such a, a great book? Thank you for sharing. Um, when I was younger, I had a very difficult time learning to read. Um, and the one person that helped me, my magical fairy reader, was my father. And he made me feel so special. That, you know, when other people or other, like my teacher or my mom tried to sit down and like coach me through having my difficulty with reading, it never worked. But when my dad did it, he made me feel so special. And I just wanted other people to feel the same special way and same, get the same connection. So I created a program called 100 Men Reading, and it also allowed me to create my book, Amani and Her Magical Fairy Readers. So magical fairy readers can come in all sorts, shapes, and sizes, all types of different people. But my magical fairy reader was my dad and my brothers. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. We've been hearing kind of like, you know, everyone's story throughout the day. And and um, everybody's been sharing how like at the start and learning how to read, they weren't always the best readers. But once again, through having a, an important person in your life with you to give you some encouragement and to inspire you to not just read but you went on and wrote your own book so i think that's fantastic um we salute your dad right now thank you so much for being a part of our world read aloud day we hope to have you back again um sometime in the near future to, to hopefully we can meet your dad and talk about all the great things that you're doing with the 100 men reading so once again thank you Thank you. Hopefully one day. But I have I have another guest reader for us. Um, this is Miley Capri. Her name, her go ahead, what's your age? I'm eight years old. She's eight years old, and today she will be reading Who Was Martin Luther King Jr. Martin's home was very happy. He had a big sister, a little brother, a father, and a mother, and they were all kind to one another. Martin was filled with love. Martin.
Ben also liked being at church. He learned to get along with everyone there, and he made many friends. Martin was filled with kindness. At home and at, tur and at church, Martin was taught to love everyone, but not everyone was taught to love him. One day, Martin's best friend said he couldn't play with him anymore because Martin's skin was different, was a different color. Martin was black and his friend was white. In Martin's city and in many other places, black people were treated unfairly. It made him sad and sometimes angry. Martin wished that all people would be kind and fair to one another. He studied and he learned about, and he learned and he thought about how to change things. When Martin grew up, he became a reverend and an activist. He was a leader in his community. When he spoke his words, it came from his big, strong heart and filled people up with love and kindness. Martin said that everyone should be treated fairly and that we should never hurt one another. He said that we could change the world peacefully. Not everyone wanted, wanted things to change, but lots and lots of people agreed with Martin. Martin showed them that they could be brave and peaceful, even when they felt scared or angry. Together they worked to show everyone that else that things needed to change. One day, Martin gave a very big speech about his dream of freedom and justice for all. Many people were there to listen. Others watched him on TV. The world still remembers what he said. I have a dream that one day we will stand up for freedom together. All of God's children will be able to join hands and sing free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Every year we celebrate Martin's birthday to remember what he had. He filled people's hearts. He worked hard for a change. He made the world more fair. And he did it all because he loved people. Let us sing of Dr. King, who stood for peace, who had a dream. Martin Luther King grew up in the South. In the South, he was born in 1929. When laws when laws separated black people from white people and treated black people unfairly. Black children and white children had different schools. Black people had more rules and less freedom. As Martin grew up, he decided to fight for change. But it was a peaceful fight. Martin led marches and protests. He made speeches. M many people listened to his words and joined his peaceful fight for justice and freedom. But Martin and his followers were, weren't treated peacefully. Many people were mean and violent to them, including police officers. It was hard and scary and very dangerous, but Martin never gave up. He spoke of a dream that all people could be treated equally. With his bravery and leadership, and leadership, he helped change many laws to be more fair. In 1964, Martin was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for showing the world that you can make powerful change 
and still be peaceful. The end. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us and um, being able to read our stories today. Um, we really appreciate it. No, thank you for coming on. Once again, we're celebrating World Read Aloud Day, and we just want individuals watching just to be inspired um, to read and to show their love of reading. And that's exactly what you two did for us today. So once again, thank you. Um, the Milford Boys and Girls Club said, great job, awesome inspiration for our youth. So people that are viewing this all the way down in Milford, Delaware. So thank you for coming on. Thank you to our partners at the Wilmington Library. Thank you to our partners with the uh, Delaware Blue Coats. And now I believe we're going to be transitioning to another library in Wilmington, the Woodlawn Library. Hey. Hello. How are you guys? Good, good, good. I know that the Woodlawn Library was having um, some technical difficulty and they did send me some information to share, but we're going to go to you first, um, Miss Chase, who is our guest author for today. Um, and I'm just going to just read a little bit of, from your bio, Miss Chase, if that's all right, just to introduce you to our viewing audience. Uh, Atia Chase works every day with students at George Reed Middle School as a teaching specialist, as teaching specialist specialist with jobs for Delaware grads. But she's also the co-author of a children's book, I Love Your Brown, which is a book inspired by Chase's then three-year-old daughter Bella, who was questioning her skin color since she saw very few, very few people who looked like her at her school, church, and other social spaces. That's when Chase solicited the help of another mom, Miss Denea Jacobs of Middletown, to co-write the book, I Love Your Brown. Miss Chase, thank you for once again joining us today. I know your book has been so inspirational. I know you've been all up and down uh, the state of Delaware and throughout um, the, the country, you know, promoting your book and just helping uh, young African-American girls to feel valued. Um, and not be ashamed of who they are or their skin color. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. If you wanted to share some words about the book before you read it, that would be great. But once again, thank you for joining us today for World Read Aloud Day and sharing your book with us. Thank you again so much for having me here today. I'm so excited to be able to read to you guys our book called I Love Your Brown. And like Mr. Livingston said, my then, uh, three-year-old daughter was the inspiration. She didn't see many people like herself in a lot of the social activities that she participated in, and she wanted to be someone she was not. Um, and I know that parents can understand um, just the pain that you go through, just the sadness that you might feel when you have this beautiful kid and they're just not liking anything about themselves, and especially the color of their skin. Um, you know, it's you can't do anything about the color of your, your skin. So uh, the purpose of this book was to help my daughter, whose name is Bella, to love the skin that she's in. So I hope that you guys enjoy listening to I Love Your Brown and that you guys are encouraged by this to continue to be who you are because you are perfect and you cannot be replaced. So I Love Your Brown. Another thing I would like to note from in the book, we have pictures of real girls. We wanted it to depict real girls. So you'll see, hopefully see yourself in these images. Whether you are chocolate mocha or a caramel complexion or round or lean, plump or petite, girl, you can be anything. Whether you have long hair or short hair, kinky hair or straight, girl, you can be anything. Because of your strengths, in spite of those weaknesses, baby girl, I just want you to know you can be anything. And I know you're wondering why. Well, because you're as tough as a tutu. You are bright 
and cool as the bluest of moons. You were born for this moment and born for this day. You were created with a purpose and designed with a plan. The boss of the boardroom. You are defined with the finest of words. You are lovely, enchanting, amazingly brilliant. This is who you are. Your beauty is uncompromising. Your light comes from a deep place. It comes from all the generations before you, your mother's mother's mother. You are fearless and unapologetically you. You bring out the poet to a sleeping artist. Baby girl, you bring the color to a blank canvas. Songs are written about your brilliance and all along we get to call you ours. Baby, set a blaze to the path that has been laid. Before the foundation of this earth, you were a part of his great big plan. I love you with the purest of love and this village of beautiful kings and queens. We salute you as you travel on. Although there will be challenges, trust that your purpose outweighs any bad day. There will be plenty of messages that tell you that you can't. Avoid them, ignore them. They are only distractions. Remember, your biggest competition is only you. It is not the brown girl standing next to you. Practice being your sister's keeper, not just for brown girls, but for all girls. Push forward, never fear tomorrow. You are safe in angel's wings. Forward, 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 you will go. And that concludes the end of I Love Your Brown. In the back of the book is the entire poem. I Love Your Brown is a poem put together with pictures. And also featured in the back of the book is a little cutie guide. In this guide, little girls can reflect with an adult about the things that make them beautiful, about the things that make them intelligent, and most importantly, the things that let them know that they can do anything. And then also the person who purchases this book for their loved one can also write their own love letter to the girl who um, inspired them to buy this book. And we also have a call to action. Our call to action is all about getting girls involved in reflecting on how beautiful they are, their skills and their talents, and um, it also challenges the girls to introduce themselves to a girl at the school, maybe that they don't usually talk to, or if they see someone sitting by themselves at lunch, to go and be a friend and introduce themselves. It also says to get involved in your community and take up space, right? We want to take up space where we're not usually um, seen if you are a minority. So um, thank you so much for allowing me to be here and reading. I love your brown. I hope you guys are all inspired, um, especially little girls to become who they are and to be comfortable in their own skin. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Atia, for such an inspirational story. Um, I know you wrote that for your daughter when she was three. How old is your daughter now? 
She is 10. And let me tell you, she's fearless now. <laughs> she, she loves the skin that she she's in. Um, you know, there's lots of conversations that we could have around colorism. Um, and she's a, a girl of a darker hue. Um, she's she's much darker than I am, but she's definitely fearless in who she is. She's um, she's talented. She's bright. She's witty. And she's she's definitely loving who she is. And I'm glad that um, God gave her to me. Um, and the challenge that I have had with her and loving her skin. Um, and we're definitely on, you know, a forward motion and upward movement with her just walking and who she's created to be. So, um, I'm loving the challenge and loving the time to be able to talk to other girls who may have had this challenge that Bella has. And it, I mean, it's just fitting. Her name is beautiful. Right. And, and once again, I think that's such a great inspirational message that you were able to um, take an issue from a conversation at home with your daughter. And then you turned that into a book to be able to share with countless other uh, individuals who could be feeling uh, the same way. What would be the best way for anyone who's watching to either get in touch with you or to purchase copies of your book so that we can continue to share the message and educate one another? So the way that you can get in touch with me um, is, is my name, Atia Chase on Facebook. I'm Atia Chase Writes on Instagram. I can throw that in the chat if everyone can see that. Um, also with the book, the best way to help out any author, um, well, is to buy the book mostly, especially if you're independent, to buy the book uh, straight from them. But um, another way that you can also help out authors is to purchase the book from Amazon. It is on Amazon under I Love Your Brown. The book is $13.99. Um, it is affordable. We also have our books in most of the libraries in the state of Delaware. So you can check out our book. Mm -hmm. um, at your local library uh, and support us that way. Yeah, it, it's so funny. As soon as you started talking about the book, one of our partners at the Route 9 Library quickly put in the chat, we have it at Route 9 Library. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you once again for just being an amazing author. We look forward to hearing from you again. And we just appreciate everything that you're doing to help educate our young scholars and especially our young ladies to help them to be encouraged to feel confident about who they are. And we just want to continue to support them and to help them grow. So once again, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Claire at the Woodlawn Library for hosting me today. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. And I know um, we were having some technical difficulties at the Woodlawn Library. Um, but I know they sent me over some information that I wanted to share with everyone about the exciting programs that they have going on and how they're working to support literacy for student achievement at the Woodlawn Library. So if that deck is up, we can go ahead and share it. And if not... I just want to say thank you to Claire at the Woodlawn Library for being such a dedicated partner. I know at the Woodlawn Library, they have a, uh, a reading challenge called uh, Reading Explore. Uh, you can go to the next one, Sharonda, please. Thank you. Uh, reading Explore, where they're focused on uh, just challenging students to read 500 books between kindergarten and sixth grade to win exceptional prizes. Also, they have some great information uh, for students that will be taking place during the month of February for Black History Month. Um, and you can earn badges by reading and researching and completing activities. Uh, for example, this month, they can earn a badge by visiting the website of the National Civil Rights Museum and sharing what you've learned. So once again, the Woodlawn Library is celebrating Black History Month with all kinds of activities and, and their Reading Explorer Book Challenge. So if you live in the, in the west side area of Wilmington and you're not too far from the Woodlawn Library, please feel free to drop in, say, hey, Miss Claire, we were watching on World Read Aloud Day and we want to know more information about the Woodlawn Library. Uh, Sharana, yep, next slide. 
They also have an opportunity on every third Saturday of the month um, for Rainbow Storytime. Um, and it starts around 11 a.m. on every third Saturday. Um, they share stories. They sing. They dance. Uh, Sometimes they're even joined by special guest authors. Uh, right now, they're meeting on Zoom. So make sure you register in order to, re to receive the log on information. So once again, the Woodlawn Library, every third Saturday at 11 a.m., Rainbow Storytime. They're having a lot of fun, but they had to pivot uh, to be online, but the information is on Zoom. Uh, if you want to register, the information is at the bottom. But if you want to know additional information, please reach out to Claire at the Woodlawn Library. Also, they have a lot of books and a lot of resources that are there just waiting for our students to come in and access. I've been to the Woodlawn Library many times. It's always a fun-filled environment. The staff are always friendly. They're always ready to greet you and to be able to help you to get on your journey of literacy and learning. So once again, they have great in-person displays. They have some virtual options for students as well. So once again, check out the Woodlawn Library. It's located on the west side of Wilmington. Once again, Claire is there ready to receive you. So once again, thank you, Mr. Tia Chase, for being our guest author for the Woodlawn Library. And now we're going to keep on moving down the state. Um, we're going to be transitioning to the Route 9 Library in Newcastle, Delaware. Hey, Miss Julia, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. I'm so glad that you could join us today to be a part of our World Read Aloud initiative. I'm so glad that Route 9 is a great partner and also a champion to lead literacy efforts for our students and adults who live in the Newcastle area. So you if you it. wouldn't mind, just tell us uh, what Route 9 is doing to help foster literacy for students and also adults. Okay. Um, I'll start with the, I brought, I brought um little show and tell. I'll start with the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. This is another uh, way that you can get uh, your kids books for their own libraries and it's free to every child in Delaware. You just sign up uh, any kid between birth and five and a book will be delivered every month to the house. And it's like getting a little present. And then you can share the time with your child by reading together. Um, it's a wonderful experience for young, young children. Um, and then we also have, I, I have a couple things that overlap with Claire. You can track your reading by doing reading challenges with us. I think this one is really exciting for Black History Month, so we thought we'd share that one. Um, you can track your reading on an app, or you can come into the library. We'll give you a paper where you can track your reading too. And we'll and we always want to encourage literacy for any age, and we'll we'll give the kids prizes and encouragement to keep reading. Um, and finally, I just want to show you this. This is uh, Delaware Library Cards. And these three, there's one for teen, whoops, teens here, and then kids till 12 here, and then the youngest kids, which way do I go? There we go. Um, the youngest kids zero to five get these this library card. And the reason that's important is that these library cards do not, you do not have uh, any fines on them. We do not want to discourage kids from reading. And we just did away with the fines for all kids um, up to teenage years. But for adults, we also have classes here. We partner with Literacy Delaware. You can take basic training and do Learn, uh, Learning Express, which has some uh, self-guided learning. You can do it here at the library or you can sign in at home to work on it at home with your library card. So there's just tons of stuff to do here. And like Woodlawn and uh, Wilmington Library, we also 
giveaway books. We've done uh, book giveaways during COVID with the Colonial School District and uh, Head Start right here in Rose Hill and also uh, early Head Start throughout the state. And um, let's see, what else was I gonna say? Uh, and we do have one little special, all the libraries are a little different. Um, I encourage you to go on field trips to all the different ones because they all have special programs. You can see behind me in this room, we have a sparkling sky in our story time room. And we also have a Lego room. So we'd love you to come in, play with our toys, read our books, take things out. You can even get toys and toys and games to check out, just like books. So there's lots and lots going on at your library. Okay. Um, thank you so much for um, telling us everything that the library's got going on. And I've partnered with the libraries quite a bit recently. And what I realized is that the libraries are a great resource, but not just for books. For, for those community resources, for family resources. And so when people, when you, when people think that libraries are just books, like what would you say to them about what the library means to the community? We are all about getting people connected with whatever they need. If it's, you know, housing or anything like that, the library has a resource. We, we uh, work with Unite Us. And we will refer people. We have social workers who are here every Wednesday in person at the library to help people walk them through getting signed up for anything that they, any assistance they might need. So we'll connect, you know, we're not going to uh, do it ourselves, but we can connect you guys. And that's why we like to work with you and other partners because we're, it's all about making the connections and all making it work. We love that spark. I love the sparkling sky too, Regina. It's, Thank it's you. Really <laughs> like I, I feel like I can go in there and really um, kind of- Really relax. Yes, yes. Oh, it's, it's amazing. How easy is it um, to get a library card? Like, What it's, is that process? It's very easy. You can bring your child to the library from yourself and you just need to have an ID that shows you live in Delaware because it is a taxpayer funded uh, service. And you sign up, we give you a card that day. And you can also, uh, something else I didn't mention, it's all, there's almost too much, uh, is that you can, you can download books to your phone. Your, there's a, we, can, we can get you going with that too. You don't actually have to take the physical books away from the library. No, it just downloads right to your phone. You don't even yep. have to come in. Yep. And so, uh, for example, the book that was just read uh, by uh, um, the I Love Your Brown, mm -hmm. that's a book that someone could just download on their phone um, I, today. I don't know about that one because it is a self-published book. Okay. That's a well, little we're going to work on that one. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little different. But we have a copy of that book and I've read it for people. So I know it's, it's here beautiful. and yeah. I will put it on hold for you and you can come in and get it. Okay. So okay. they can come in and get it. Uh, but there, there are also um, books that they can get on their phone because many, so many that you can get on so your yes. phone. Yeah. You can't get 100% of everything. So it's sometimes it's good to come in because there are activities and that's like right. Lego room. So that's exactly especially right. Especially if you have a, a young person who's like into engineering or into STEM, they can come on in and get their hands hands on. on. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And that's another reason I I I mentioned the toys and okay. the puzzles and things because a lot of people do learn hands on. I know I do. So it's I always better. It. It yeah. Makes it so, fun. It you makes can it take fun. it home. So it's like the kids and the family. And it, it's it's a thing that if I came in and I brought my kids with me, I could also be connected to services while the kids are able to get their hands on learning yep. and have fun. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it's all about the fun. That's why I'm 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 in a library now, because I just want to talk about how much fun reading is and how cool <laughs> it is. Libraries are fun. I think I think you know TV gave the wrong idea about well I no I agree. They're Shh. definitely fun. Every time I go in there's like I find some new discovery that there that is happening. I'm like, oh I, you guys do this? It's amazing. Yeah. So 
So yeah. I thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. We have um, we have folks from everywhere. Uh, Laurel Boys and Girls Club says, hey. Have hey. You all <laughs> I'm People glad to see you guys. From all over. And so I, it's been really good to get this information out. Um, this is stuff that I've learned about the libraries. It's, it's really throughout the entire state. Um, this wealth of resources, um, not just with uh, books, but tutoring or um, STEM, um, some, you know, fun. Sometimes there's movie days. Sometimes there's like really fun, engaging things. And so if you are looking for stuff to do with your kids, uh, where can they find the information? It's best that? to look. Um, you can you can go to the Delaware Library's website and that will get you to every you know, you'll find a link to every single library. But you can also do a very simple search for whatever library you want. Um, but lib.de.us is the main uh, state library. That's so that all over the state you can hook up with the library that way. So if someone's looking for the library that's closest to them, um, and there's there's a library in pretty much every community, uh, they could go to this site and um, yep. and then find the library and then see what that library has going on. You got it. Thank you so much. Such no problem. information for World Real All Day. Please go visit your local library um, or download some books. Do both. Take the kids. Make it a family day. There's a ton of activities that they can they can do. Thank Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, oh, that was awesome, Sharonda. Thank you. So we have um, right now. We said so we have a, this statewide initiative. We have been connected with libraries from Newcastle County uh, through through uh, Sussex. Um, so you'll see a lot of the Boys and Girls Clubs, a lot of after school programs are watching. Hi, I want to say hi to all the kids. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying some of the readings. We do have more authors. We have more readings, go, you know, coming in. Uh, we want to make sure that you um, get to hear all the books and then know how to access them and know how to get um, how to get these books or get other books for yourself. Um, can can you talk a little bit about some of the literacy initiatives that that you have going on? Yeah, one of the ones that uh, I'm so proud of and I'm so engaged with is um, my very own library. I know my very own library. We talked about it at the top of the program, but my very own library is a coordinated effort um, throughout the state of Delaware in which we are providing students with brand new um, free titles. So the traditionally, um, you know, schools would have Scholastic to come in and Scholastic would set up a book fair, but you had the students would have to pay for the books. Um, we do realize that, you know, not all students have money. And this became like a really a big barrier um, to providing students books. So in partnership with Scholastic and, you know, us, United Way of Delaware and University of Chicago, we were able to create my very own library, which we had some identified schools to be able to participate in the My Very Own Library initiative to receive uh, free books throughout the school year. This year, those identified schools in all of, we do have schools probably in all of the school districts. Um, I, I, I don't want to name them all, but um, we are servicing about 6,000 students. Um, so far this school year, we've given out, given out roughly a little over 30,000 books. Um, so we're well on our way. We still have another uh, book fair to get through in the spring um, in which students will receive uh, five brand new books throughout the school year. At the book fair, students receive uh, five books. So at the book fair we just had in, the, in December, students receive five books. So the book fair that they'll have in the spring, they'll receive an additional five books. And once again, this program is one to eliminate the, the cost of having to purchase the books. And two, we want to foster and create home libraries for students to have that love of reading. So if there's a school or a school district and you're interested about having uh, the My Very Own Library initiative at your school, please get in touch with me here at the United Way building. You can email me up. It's right there at klivingston at uwde.org. Once again, please email me. I would love to hear from you. Um, the other thing I've been able to do is also 
um, is just visit schools. If you're having an evening event, if you're having something on the weekend, if you know of events taking place in your school community, please contact me. I would love to come set up an information table. And when I come to set up those information table, I'm providing information about my very own library, about additional resources and programs in the community that parents can take advantage of. And specifically some of our different programs here at United Way of Delaware. And I'm also providing students books. So please, you know, contact me. I would love to connect. I would love to partner. And I would love to hear from you to be able to provide these resources and these books to your students and your families at your identified schools. Thank you for that information. So yes, go to uh, Kay Livingston at uwd.org. And we are going to take it back to Route 9 um, for story time. And so I am going to um, pass it to Ken so you can uh, let us know who our special guest is. Um, so kids, if you're watching, get ready. It's going to be a fun story time coming up in the sparkly room. <laughs> Right. So I would like to introduce our special guest author for Route 9 Library, Mr. John Miklos. Uh, he's written more than 50 children's books. Uh, his most popular titles include the picture book, One Leaf, Two Leafs, Count With Me, uh, Book Penguin, and the book that he'll be reading today, Raindrops to Rainbows. He has also written dozens of nonfiction books aimed at upper elementary students, uh, John has spoken at national conferences and often does presentations and writing workshops for schools, and he lives in Newark, Delaware. Welcome, Mr. John, and thank you for being a part of our World Read Aloud Day initiative live from your local library. Well, I am delighted to be part of this uh, local initiative and always delighted to read to and with children uh, live or virtually. And I look forward to sharing a couple of stories today. I'm going to uh, first begin by reading my book, Raindrops to Rainbow, which uh, just came out this past uh, March. And then I'm going to read a book for uh, Black History Month, Sonny Rollins Plays the Bridge. And that one's written by Gary Golio and illustrated by James Ran Ransom. But I'll start with mine. This is Raindrops to Rainbow. And I wrote it as illustrated by Charlene Chua, who is an illustrator from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Plip, plop, plip, plop, plip, plip, plop. Will these raindrops ever stop? I want a calm, clear blue sky day so I can go outside and play. I miss the yellow summer sun, miss the laughter, miss the fun. Now I stare out at the rain. My breath fogs up the window pane. The sky is damp and dull and gray with more dark rain clouds on the way. Rumbling, rolling, scary thunder. Grab green blanket, scramble under. Find brown bear and hold him tight. Try to chase away my fright. White lightning streaks across the stars, skies. So bright, I, I duck my head and close my eyes. Mom gives bear and me a hug. I feel safer. I feel snug. Mom makes up a game she calls. Count each blue raindrop as it falls. No way, I say. It can't be done. Mom smiles. Let's try. It could be fun. One drop, two drops, thousands, millions, maybe six or eight gajillion. Raindrops splash down to the ground, make gray puddles all around. Mom makes soup for us to eat. And orange slices, what a treat. Look outside, the clouds are clearing. First I'm smiling, then I'm cheering. Pull red rain boots on our feet. Find some puddles by the street. Stomp, stomp, stomp those puddles dry. Then I look up at the sky. Beaming rainbow. 
bold and bright, brilliant colors. What a sight. Seven stripes, I know each one, and I name them just for fun. I see violet, then indigo. Five more colors left to go. Blue and green stripes cross the skies. So bright, I have to shade my eyes. Yellow, orange, then comes red. Seven colors overhead. Reach for the rainbow, bright and wide. Then it's time to go inside. When I climb into bed, I'm glad, thinking of the day we've had. I don't mind rain because I know without raindrops, there's no rainbow. So I enjoy, I, I really enjoyed writing that book and I like it because it kind of shares the fact that, you know, it's, it's kind of the way life is right now. We've, we've had a lot of rain, we've had a, we've had a pandemic, we've had all sorts of challenges. And uh, hopefully we'll see a rainbow at the end of that. So I think it's a good message for kids everywhere and for adults everywhere that, that sometimes we have to go through the rain in order to, to get to the rainbow. So I was, was happy to share that book with you. And now I'd like to share one called Sonny Rollins Plays the Bridge. And Sonny Rollins is a famous jazz saxophone player. And he practiced his craft by climbing to the top of the Williamsburg Bridge in New York City and practicing there. So I'd like to read a story about that. Like I said, this one is by Gary Golio and illustrated by James Ransom. The bridge leaps, spreads its wings joyfully, joining shore to shore. Steel towers standing tall, reaching high touching sky. <laughs> Lifting trains, cars, people, floating all here to there through the air. And the river stretched out below, a shiny, endless song. The city has spaces, large and small, room for all. But when you can't play in your apartment, shh, the neighbors, you can play outside if you know where. So Sonny walked down to Lancy Street, comes from home carrying his case, his saxophone case, moving through space. Ahead, is that a strange place to play his horn? Or is it strange to listen to that small voice inside which says you need to do this, even if everyone else wonders why? Sonny climbs the steps to the bridge, to the walkway at the top, and strolls above the sprawling spider city with millions of lives, Lights, movement and speed, lots of sound and lots of noise. The bridge equals a place to play, a place to be alone with just you, where you can blow, blow, blow a horn as loud as you want. Subway cars clanking, clanging, banging out rhythm on silvery train tracks. Sonny's fingers clicking, clacking on sparkling brass sax keys. Tugboats blowing bass notes back and forth. Sonny answering note for note with low moans of his own. And high-pitched seagull cries echoing echoing Sonny's funny squeaks and squawks. A giant bridge that strides the river, a giant jazz man who strides the bridge. Here, Sonny can play everything that comes into his mind.
Sonny's breath borne through the horn in harmony with all around him. Above the sky, deep and blue, spread out like a smile over earth. Below, Sonny's mind, open wide, spread out like a net, catching what falls and drawing notes down, down, down from the sky. And again, the bridge leaps, spreads its wings, just like Sonny, Sonny on the bridge. And there he is playing his saxophone. Well, thank you for listening to the stories. I enjoyed sharing them with you. And now I'll turn it back over to our hosts. Thank you, Mr. John, for those two incredible stories. Um, I love the title, Raindrops to Rainbows. Tell us a little bit more about what inspired you to write that book and what was the inspiration also for the title? Oh, thank you for asking. This is one of those books, my best books kind of come to me in, in bits of inspiration. And I was at a writer's retreat up in the Poconos and I was in a cabin working and it was a rainy, dreary day. And I really wanted to be outside hiking the trails and just enjoying the enjoying nature. And I heard the rain drumming against the roof of the cabin and, and this line popped into my head, flip, plop, flip, plop, flip, flip, plop. Will these raindrops ever stop? I was like, oh, I think I can do something with that. And so from that came kind of the idea of a story about a young girl who was uh, waiting for the, the rain to stop and, and wanted to be outside. And kind of I, I conceived of it then as, as a color book. So that's why we, there's talk about the yellow sun and the blue sky and the gray clouds. And then working in things like uh, the green blanket and the white lightning and brown bear, and then leading up to the, the colors of the rainbow. And uh, kind of the, the title came to me, um, I guess just it got kind of as a natural outgrowth of that process because it's about raindrops leading to uh, rainbow. And there's also some nice alliteration of the raindrops and the rainbow. And it just seemed to uh, work well. And, you know, sometimes publishers change your title uh, when authors submit a book, but they, they love the title just as much as I did. So it got to stay just as I conceived it. Good, good. Thank you. I, I know we, we've worked together in the past. And as always, thank you for being a part of every time I've called you. You've always answered the call. <laughs> we've always been able to, to partner and I just love what you're doing uh, through your books and through your love of literacy to be able to share these color, these, you know, colorful stories uh, with students to help them to be inspired to read. So thank you once again for being a part of this initiative for World Read Aloud Day. Well, thank you for inviting me. Like I said, I always enjoy sharing, sharing my books with, with young readers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know we should have one more person from, uh, from Route 9 Library that wanted to come on and, and share some information with our viewing audience. So I know if that person is there, there she is. How you doing, Miss Marion? Hello, hello. Good, good. Thank you for, for once again being our point of contact for Route 9 Library um, to assist us with this initiative. It's always great to work with our former colleagues of United Way of Delaware. I'm glad we were able just to keep in touch throughout the pandemic and see each other throughout the city. And still once again, to be working together again, like we never stop. So thank you for all of the efforts that you're doing. Absolutely. I was truly inspired by the work that I did with United Way of Delaware and the collaborations and the relationships that I've grew along the way. It's been phenomenal collaborating with the Route 9 Library and McCullough Middle School. Also, Rose Hill Community Center has been such a great support to uh, winners programming. Winners stand for when in need, navigate every resource. And I just wanted to get on to let you guys know that we are here to make sure we advocate, educate, and empower our children and communities. And with reading and access to books, it empowers us to understand what knowledge is and the importance of reading and accessing different resources when it comes to being aware of things. And I just wanted to make sure we know the importance of the actual physical book. I come into Route 9 Library on a regular basis 
And it's been phenomenal for me and my kids. It's such a support and they absolutely love it. I have a 20 year old, eight year old and 11 year old and they all come and we all use the facility. And I just wanna say thank you guys. Thank you for being here and thank you for listening. John Mickles has been awesome and I've worked with him for about four years and this World Read Aloud uh, program and he is phenomenal. I am so glad that he was able to come on and continue collaborating with us this year. Thank you again, John. You're awesome. Yeah, once again, thank all of our partners at the Route 9 Library for just coming on today to be a part of this initiative. If you live in the Newcastle area or if you have transportation and you just want to take a visit to the Route 9 Library, please feel free to do so. It's a beautiful facility. Um, if you need a landmark, it's right across the street from Bolarama, if you're familiar with uh, Newcastle Avenue. So, you know, come to the library and then go get a couple games of bowling. But they're there. Once again, their staff is phenomenal. They have great books, uh, yes. great technology there. I was there not too long ago. There's a teen center and a teen room there. So they're there and they, and they have great programs and phenomenal staff again. And just there to, to love on individuals as they come in to help them to be stronger readers, um, to get information, to access technology, and to have fun while they're there. I think we've gotten away from letting that our students know that the library is a fun place to be and a fun place to go. They're, they're inviting, they have great resources. And once again, it's not you know all about getting the books, but they have a lot of great technology that they can access the books um, virtually. So just a, a quick shout out. If you have, if you're watching for our viewing audience and if you have questions and you want to leave a, a question or a comment in the chat, please feel free to do so. Um, I want to say hello to all of my, my, my students at Bancroft. Um, it says the first through third grade students at Bancroft are watching. I know the Boys and Girls Club down in Milford, Delaware has been watching. My colleague Wanda Barrett was on. Uh, another colleague, Valerie Brown. Uh, happy World Read Aloud Day from the Laurel Boys and Girls Club. So keep the comments and the shout out coming. Thank you for uh, Miss Regina Sydney Brown, who's also another great colleague here at United Way of Delaware. Just thank everyone for joining us today. Once again, if you want to give your program a shout out, please feel free to do so. I will definitely shout you out. Um, Sharonda, let me know if we're ready to travel downstate to the Dover Library. We are ready. We have um, another uh, guest um, at Dover Public Library who is ready to come and uh, give us a wonderful story. So I, I if you are uh, willing to introduce, mm -hmm. I will bring them on. I am. I am. Um, I would like to introduce Dr. Dwight Boney. Uh, he's an educator, an author, and an actor. He has written three novels for adults and one children's book called Little Dwight and the Light. Thank you, uh, Dr. Dwight, for coming on today to be able to share um, your story with us. And I see you have a, a friend there from the Dover Library. So before you get into your book, um, Dover Library, if you just want to share your name and just how the Dover Library is helping to support uh, students through literacy. Well, hello, my name is Rosie. I work here at the Dover Public Library. We host many weekly story times that encourage early literacy in our youngest uh, patrons here at the library. We love to see them all come in. We do lots of songs and stories and share those stories out loud. Um, we also have a special partnership with some of our local schools to do a program called Prime Time that promotes literacy amongst um, low-income families in our community. So we, we're always uh, promoting literacy here at the Dover Public Library. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, uh, if you live in the in the Dover area and, you're, and your students need a safe place to go, um, they're there. They're waiting for you to be able to access the resources to be able to provide you a library card to check out books. So please come down to the Dover Library, um, support them. We have to go back and support our local libraries. They're there, they're open, they're waiting for you. Um, Dr. Dwight is as a, once again, it's, uh, it's good to see you. It's good to finally talk to you in person. I know we were able to connect
to a mutual friend, uh, Donovan Alderman of Monty's Neighborhood Snacks. Now, he did tell me you uh, are a graduate of Delaware State University. Is that true? Yes, I am. Proud of okay. Good, good. It's, it's always good to connect with a fellow Hornet. Uh, DSU Pride, let, let's stand up. You know, we always like to salute one another. So I salute you today, uh, Doc, um, for, for everything that you're doing, for writing books, and also being a uh, an alumni of Delaware State University. Thank you. Good. So I let's uh, let's go ahead and allow you to, to jump into your book, uh, Little Dwight and the Light, for all of our viewers. Great. Um, this is Little Dwight and Light, the book that was written by myself, my father, as well as a little bit of influence from probably the best illustrator I've ever seen who designed Little Dwight, Sean Gain. So book was written by me, Dwight Bonet Jr. It was inspired by thoughts of my father, Dwight Bonet Sr., and then, of course, illustrated by Sean Gain. Um, the story essentially is just about a young man who kind of is curious if the light in the refrigerator goes off when you close the door. So let's get started. A long, long, long time ago, in a land not so far away, a young boy would discover the truth about the light in the refrigerator. Little Dwight asks, can I have a snack? His mother says, no, dear. We just brushed our teeth this time for bed. Little Dwight says, can I have some juice? His mother says, fine, hurry up. Little Dwight runs out of his bedroom and turns on the hallway light. He zooms down the stairs to the kitchen. It's dark, but the light from the hallway helps him to see. The kitchen was very dark. Then he opens the refrigerator and the light was as bright as the sun. He pours his juice in his cup and slurps until every drop is gone. His mother yells, hurry up! Little Dwight runs back up the stairs and down the hallway to his bedroom. His mother is standing in his room and asks, did we forget to do something? Little Dwight sees he left the light on in the hallway. He says, sorry, I forgot to turn the light on. His mother reminds him, we don't leave lights on in the house. His mother tucks him in nice and tight before kissing him on the forehead. Then she whispers, good night. Little Dwight woke up in the middle of the night and started to wonder, is the light still on in the refrigerator? He decides to go to the kitchen to see. Little Dwight jumps out of bed, tiptoes down the hallway. He tries to be as quiet as possible. He doesn't want to wake his parents. Little Dwight takes a deep breath. He opens the refrigerator door and the light was still on. He starts opening and closing the door real slow. It looks like the light never turns off. Suddenly, little Dwight hears a noise from upstairs. He runs back up the stairs and down the hall to his bedroom. He jumps back into the bed like he never left. He curls up under the covers and wonders if the light in the refrigerator was still on. The next morning, little Dwight rushes out of bed, gets dressed for school. He quickly brushes his teeth before heading downstairs. Little Dwight hurries down the stairs, to the kitchen as fast as he can. He can't wait to see if the light is on in the refrigerator. He runs into the kitchen and sees his father eating breakfast before work. Little Dwight says, good morning. His father says, how is my son doing today?
But Dwight walks over to the refrigerator and doesn't answer his phone. He starts opening and closing the door real slow. He does it once. He does it twice. And he does it a third time. His father kneels beside him and asks, Son, what are you doing? Little Dwight says, I'm trying to see something. His father asks, what are you trying to see? Little Dwight says, I'm trying to see if the light goes off in the refrigerator. His father giggles and tells him to come over and sit on his lap. Little Dwight asks, what is so funny? His father tells him, nothing, son. The question about the refrigerator light is a good one. His father says, do you really want to know if the light goes off the refrigerator? And little Dwight replies, yes! His father smiles and says, the light in the refrigerator goes out when you close the door. Little Dwight says, how do you know that? His father replies, I wondered the same thing when I was a boy. When the door closes, it makes the light show. Little Dwight says, good. I didn't want to get in trouble for leaving the light on. The end. That is my first and probably will not be my only children's book, Little Dwight and the Light. Should I just go right into my next book? All right. The next one I have is Freedom in Congo Square. On Sundays in New Orleans, Congo Square slaves were able to gather, sing, dance, and play music together. Here, at least for half of the day, they could feel free from their Mondays, there were hogs to slop, mules to train, and logs to chop. Slavery was no ways fair. Six more days to Congo Square. Tuesdays, there were cows to feed, fields to plow, and rows to see. A moment without work was rare. Five more days to Congo Square. Wednesdays, there were beds to make, silver to shine, and bread to bake. The dreaded lash, too much to bear, four more days to Congo Square. Thursdays, there were clothes to clean, floors to scrub, and babes to wean. Spiritual rose from the despair, three more days to Congo Square. Fridays, there were crops to pick, trees to prune, and walls to break. Run away, run away, some slaves dare, two more days to Congo Square. Saturdays, there were beans to can, hens to pluck, and folks to fan. Freedom was slaves, ardent prayer, one more day to Congo Square. Week in, week out, from sun to sun, always more chores to be done. And even as the plantation slept, wood was on the fire. But Sunday was a day of rest when Master charmed the weekend guest. Slaves had off one afternoon when the law allowed them to commute. They flocked to New Orleans, Congo Square, Sunday slaves, and free met there.
it was a market in a gathering ground where African music could resound. Beneath the sun in the open air, the crowd above with news to share. Group by nation, language, tribe. They drum ancestral roots alive. They play triangles, gourds, and bells, bonzas, flutes, fiddles, and shells. Women in gall with silk and purse, men in fringe and furry tails, shook tambourines and shouted chants as rhythms fueled a spirited dance. They rejoice as if they had no care, half day, half free in Congo Square. This piece of earth was a world apart. Congo Square was freedom's heart. And that is the end. Freedom in Congo Square. Thank you for listening. That is both of the books I had to read today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Thank you, sir, for writing good, good books. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Let me put myself over here. That's the plan. Keep this on. Because he ain't got his on. I'm a fan. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> thank you, Captain. Doctor Dwight, thank you again for uh for coming work. on to join us today to be a part of our World Read Aloud celebration. Um, I just wanted to to ask you a, a couple questions about you know what inspired you to write a uh, Little Dwight and the Light. I'm sorry, uh, it broke up a little bit. What was that? Oh, I'm sorry. I said, uh, what inspired you to write Little Dwight and the Light? Little Dwight was inspired by my father. My, my father knew I was writing books and randomly one day said, you know, if you wrote a book about the light in the refrigerator, because he remembers as a, as a small boy wondering if that light ever went off. And then I did the exact same thing. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there right now thinking about, wow, I really did think about that as a kid. At one point. So that was the inspiration. Good, good. Now, are you do you have any other children's books like in the works or that you're working on uh that you could give us a preview to yes actually little dwight is probably gonna get turned into a series so little dwight might get a couple friends and uh we're working on some ideas to bring little dwight to life so that way he's more than just looking for the light in the refrigerator he'll have some more adventures and take some journeys that uh, i think would be really interesting and fun Good, good. We have a lot of uh, students watching throughout the state of Delaware. What tips uh, would you or advice would you be able to give any of our young writers? If, if anyone who's viewing, if they're thinking about writing a book or becoming a young author, what advice would you give them? So tips, tips for writing a children's book. I'd have to say the biggest thing is a good illustrator. Uh, and the reason why is because Sean Gaines, my illustrator, um, it's one thing to have a good idea, but without having a character as cute as this, no one's going to want to read your book. So it definitely helps to have a good story, um, taking the time to really plan out that story, but also having a character that actually has that lovable face, especially with a children's book. Thank you once again for, for coming on and just sharing uh, Dwight and Delight and also another book for Black History Month. And once again, thank you to our partners down there at the Dover Library. Thank you once again for being a part of what we're doing today. We're just being able to, to have this platform to share stories um, and give opportunities to our young readers to see all different kinds of people from different cultures and backgrounds just sharing their love of literacy with students throughout the state of Delaware. So thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. So we're still uh, moving on down the line. So I know next up we have another guest author that will be coming to us from uh, from the Laurel Library. Um, but uh, I think he's having a little bit of technical difficulty. So uh, Sharonda, if you want to come in and uh, just tell us uh, some information about the work that you're doing here at United Way of Delaware. Thank 
you. Uh, so, you know, I am in community engagement and really uh, the work that I do kind of spans across the um, organization, which also expands across the state. So uh, we are working to um, support literacy programs. And so that, that means um, some book fairs like the ones that you and I did at the Hope Center, um, which will have more book fairs, making sure that we are um, getting books into the hands of kids and enriching their uh, home libraries with um, free free books. Um, and the book drive uh, that we did, what was that, just a couple of months ago, got over like 900 books. You collected like a ton of books. And so that was really amazing. Um, so a lot of people came out to support that. And so when we get that kind of support, we are able to then go out and make sure that the community um, are, has what they need. So we are able to get those books to the kids. We are able to um, have um, activities like this that show the benefits of reading, connect them with authors, and get them engaged. Um, we are working on more reading events actually um, coming up over the next couple of months. Um, and then we will um, always have volunteer opportunities. If, um, if you don't know, you can go to volunteer.uwde.org and there are always ongoing opportunities. And then every month um, there are new opportunities for whatever is happening that month. So we will have opportunities for Black History Month um, we will have uh, reading opportunities such as this, but we, uh, and, and you'll meet Wanda later. I'm sure most of you already know her, uh, but with uh, Virtual Reading Angels, that is um, a really great way to get involved with the reading. Um, it's virtual, so you're not having to even go out. You just get a book, you um, read it, you make it fun, you make it interested, and you upload it, and then we get that out to kids um, throughout the state. So, so that's, that's ongoing. That's something you can do today, tomorrow. Um, and it's, there are themes that usually come out. So Black History Month would be uh, what we're doing now, but any, any of your favorite books, um, you, can, you can go ahead and read it and be a virtual reading angel. Um, if you are Spanish speaking, we, I mean, please read a book upload it. Uh, we, we are um, making sure that all communities are um, getting the books that they love and are able to engage in literacy activities. Um, so that's some of the things that's going on. So you can look out for that. Like I said, go if you want to volunteer, um, go to volunteer.uwde.org to find opportunities. And um, I, okay, yeah, we're still, we're just waiting on Laurel. Um, we can talk about some of um, Laurel libraries. Um, the libraries, Laurel and Dover, um, also have a lot of community engagement activities, a lot of community events, and we'll be partnering with not just Laurel and Dover, but Route 9, Woodlawn. Uh, we have a great uh, relationship with the mm -hmm. Wilmington Public Library. We're definitely uh, working to make sure that you know, that the community knows that they can come to these libraries, that they can get um, support services while also um, reading and getting access to computers, internet, uh, books, and social services, um, as well as great events like this. <laughs> this is a great, exciting event. Um, I know we are we are running a little bit ahead of schedule, but we definitely want to thank everyone who's still tuned in with us, who's who's been watching. Um, if you're still out there and you want to drop a chat, um, go ahead and drop, you know, some comments in the chat. I would love to hear from you to know who's still watching, who's still engaged with us. Uh, once again, we're just waiting for um, our guest author to uh, to get signed in and get situated at the Laurel Library. Um, so are once the again, winners, I, are the winners still are the winners still there or? Um, if, if you are, say hi, Bancroft. I know we had like so many watch parties happening throughout the state. We wanted to make sure that uh, that all of all of the youth, all of the young people throughout the state were able to watch. And so they had little get togethers and little parties with pizza and was able to sit around and um, and watch people, authors read their books. And we want to kind of emulate like what you can do at home um, when you get together with your kids, you gather the family around, you can do some story times. 
let the kids read to you, you read to the kids, um, choose your favorite books. Sometimes I know I would pick out classic books that I I grew up with and I'd read those um, to my daughter. And so just kind of like trying to pass that on. Um, so, mm -hmm. and we shared, um, we shared a lot of like sci-fi fantasy books that we would read together. Um, so a lot of times you can take it, take literacy, take books and make it a family activity. You read me a chapter and I'll read you a chapter. Um, mm -hmm. And then have conversations and ask questions about it um, to really help with some of that comprehension and um, to get their understanding. It's, it's a way to even just kind of get how they think about things and get to know them more. Yeah, I think reading um, with, with your children at home is such a, a great way just to continue to engage them. There are so many things that happens when you are reading to your child and, and your child is able to read with you. Um, and I know the, the biggest thing is that it really helps them to build confidence. Um, and we want all of our kids to be confident when they're in school. We want them to be to have the courage to raise their hand, to ask questions. If there's something that they don't understand, we want them to be able to say, hey, um, you know, engage with their teacher to get additional instruction for whatever the teacher may be teaching. Um, reading also just goes with you throughout the rest of your life. You know, we want students to be able to, to elevate in each grade. Mm -hmm. um, we want them to be able to go from first to, to second to third and to once again have those necessary building blocks in literacy to help them carry through the next grade. Ultimately, we, we want all of our students to, to graduate. Um, we want them to continue to go on to college. We want them to have those access and those resources, but it all starts with reading. So we just want to continue to encourage students out there to read each and every day. It doesn't take that long for you to continue to grow as a reader. It's just 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes a day can just help you go a long way. That kind of rhyme too. 15 <laughs> minutes a day can go a long way. 15 That's minutes crazy. a day can go a long way. You're practicing to be a more confident and stronger reader. And so now we can uh, take it down onto Laurel and uh, showcase another amazing author and amazing story. So Ken, I'm going to uh, pass it off and you go ahead and let us know who's coming. Our next featured author is none other than Dr. Julius Mullen. I, I could say so much about this guy. Um, but I'm going to try to contain myself because I could I could go on probably for the next 20 minutes talking about how great of a person that Dr. Julius Mullen is. But Dr. Julius Mullen, uh, he's leading, teaching, coaching and mentoring um, are among his life's most precious gifts. Uh, Dr. Mullen recently accepted his dream job as an executive director for the Brian Allen School of Excellence, which is a charter school in Georgetown, Delaware. Um, in Dr. Mullen's spare time, uh, he loves spending time with his family and friends, enjoying one of his home cooked special dishes or traveling to one of his selected Caribbean islands. Now, does that mean you own an island, Dr. Mullen? Did, do you like to, to visit Caribbean islands or do you, do you own an island? I wish I owned an island. <laughs> I love to visit the Caribbean islands. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, good, good. So glad that you could join us today. Thank you. We've been on since uh, 3 p.m. Just sharing our love of literacy with students um, throughout the state of Delaware. Once again, I'm glad that you could join us today. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way so that you can share um, your stories with our students and our, our guest watchers today. So the floor is all yours, Dr. Mullen, and thank you. Thank you, Ken. I really appreciate that introduction. And uh, I am so excited to be in Laurel, Delaware. Uh, I certainly call Sussex County my home and Laurel's in Sussex County. I will be bringing to you two books. I would first read, uh, I am... I am enough, uh, and I will follow uh, after I read I am enough. I will read the book that my wife and I uh, wrote called Just Love Me. All righty. So I am enough. I am enough. Like the sun, I am here to shine.
like the voice, I'm here to sing. Like the bird, I'm here to fly and soar high over everything. Like the trees, I'm here to grow. Like the mountains, here to stand. Like time, I'm here to be and be everything I can. Like the champ, I'm here to fight. Like the heart, I'm here to love. Like a ladder here to climb and like the air to rise above. Like the wind, I'm here to push. Like a rope, I'm here to pull. Like the rain, I'm here to pour and drip and fall until I'm full. Like the moon, I'm here to dream. Like the student, I'm here to learn. Like the water, here to swell. Like the fire, here to burn. Like the winner, I'm here to win. And if I don't, get up again. I know that I may sometimes cry, but even then, I'm here to try. I'm not meant to be like you. You're not meant to be like me. Sometimes we will get along and sometimes we will disagree. I know that we don't look the same. Our skin, our eyes, our hair, our frame. But that does not dictate our worth. We both have places here on earth. And in the end, we are right here to live a life of love, not fear. To help each other when it's tough. To say together I am enough. My pleasure to read I Am Enough by Grace Byers, who is a New York Times bestseller. The next book uh, I am also privileged to have written with my wife and was so excited about the message that this particular book sends not only to children, but to the world. Just love me. Just love me. I have brown skin. I have dark skin. I have light skin. I have white skin. Whatever the color of my skin, just Love me. I live in an apartment. I live in a house. 
I live in a motel. I live in a trailer. I live here and there. Wherever I live, just love me. I have blonde hair. I have braided hair. I have different colored hair. I have curly hair. I have long hair. I have natural hair. I have short hair. I have no hair. Whatever the length of my hair, just love me. I speak English language. I speak Spanish language. I speak Chinese language. I speak French language. I speak French Creole language. I speak many languages. Whichever language I speak, just love me. My family is from the east. My family is from the west. My family is from the north. My family is from the south. My family is from many places. Wherever my family is from, just love me. I think boys are cute. I think girls are cute. I think girls and boys are cute. I'm not sure who is cute. Whoever I think is cute, just love me. I'm a boy. I'm a girl. I'm not sure if I'm a boy or a girl. Whoever I am, just love me. I worship Allah. I worship Buddha. I worship God. I worship Jesus. I worship God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I don't worship anyone. I'm not sure who I worship. Whoever I worship, just love me. I have different needs. I have trouble hearing. I can't hear at all. I have trouble seeing. I can't see at all. I have trouble speaking. I can't speak at all. I have trouble moving around. Whatever I have trouble with, just love me. I learn best by using my ears. I learn best by using my eyes. I learn best by using my hands. I learn best by using more than one way. I'm not sure how I learn best. However I learn, just love me. I am big for my age. I am small for my age. I am short for my age. I am tall for my age. I am the right size for my age. Whatever size I am, just love me. I live with mom and dad. I live with mom. I live with dad. I live with two moms. I live with two dads. I live with a step parent. I live with grandparents. I live with other family. I live with a foster family. Whoever I live with, just love me. I feel safe. I feel scared. I feel happy. I feel sad. I feel excited. I feel angry. I feel healthy. I feel sick. I feel calm. I feel anxious. I have many feelings. I'm not sure how I feel. However I feel, just love me. I've had one bad thing that has happened to me. I've had a couple of bad things that have happened to me. I've had several bad things that have happened to me. I've had many bad things that have happened to me. I've never had anything bad happened to me. Whatever has happened to me, just love me. 
Being nice is hard for me sometimes. Sharing with my friends is hard for me sometimes. Following the rules is hard for me sometimes. Taking turns is hard for me sometimes. Getting along with others is hard for me sometimes. Remembering things is hard for me sometimes. Talking about my feelings is hard for me sometimes. Whatever is hard for me, just love me. I have a lot of friends. I have a few friends. I have a best friend. Making friends is tough for me. Whatever number of friends I have, just love me. However I am and wherever I'm from, just love me. Whoever I am and whatever I am, just love me. Thank you so much. And that concludes the book, Just Love Me by Dr. Julius Mullen and Mrs. Natasha Mullen. Thank you once again for having me. Dr. Mullen, thank you so much for reading uh, Just Love Me. Like I was listening to it and I've heard you do it a couple of times and I'm, I'm just still so moved by the content of your book. I think you hit on every area, almost every aspect of a student's life, regardless where they are from, what they've been into, what they've been able to achieve, not achieve it. Anything is possible as long as they have a caring adult who sticks by their side and loves them. I think that's such an important message, especially um, with us as a nation still in a COVID um, pandemic. Um, if we just have some more patience with one another and continue to love on each other just a little bit more, I know that this world can definitely be a better place. Absolutely. I cannot say, uh, uh, you know, no sentiments enough, especially in being in a world where so many of us and kids are watching, watching and modeling, mm -hmm. where we're in a position we often feel like we have to choose whether to go left or right or up and down or this way or that way. And regardless of any demographic identity, uh, specific life circumstance or unique situation, love is the central, most effective skill and attribute that any of us can have. So thank you so much once again for having me. No problem, Dr. Mullen. Thank you for once again being a part of World Read Aloud Day, uh, live from your local library throughout the state of Delaware. Um, and I know we had some other uh, individuals that we wanted to bring on from the Laurel Library to talk to us a little bit about the services um, that the Laurel Library is, is offering in, in their neck of the woods downstate. So if they're ready, we would like to bring them on just to share a little bit. And talk to us. Out to the Laurel Library. <laughs> Come on down, ladies. <laughs> well, hello. Thank you so much. We would just wanted to extend again another round of gratitude for Dr. Mullen for reading his book. I am Stacy Lane. I am the youth service librarian here, and this is my friend Regina. She is from. Um, well, I'll the let Del her tell you the Delaware After School Network. Thank you so much for being a part of this, Dr. Mullen. Thanks for everybody that is streaming live with us. Um, happy World Read Aloud Day. We are so honored and fortunate to be live at the Laurel Library with our partners and also want to say hey to all the boys and girls clubs out there as well as Laurel Boys and Girls Club. Thank you for being a partner down here in Sussex County. Thank you so much. And I just wanted to give you some more things that you can expect from the Laurel Public Library. This month, we're going to use this event, the World Read Aloud Day, in order to kick off our Black History Month. We're going to have a video each week on our Facebook page. You can check it out at um, the Laurel Public Library Delaware Facebook page. And every week we're going to have a different 
Black community member reading a book with their family, one of their favorites. We are very excited to bring you all of our community members, and we're happy to uh, have this event available for you, as well as we're going to start on Monday with a Scratch Code Club. We have um, a lot of our in-person events back. You can check the website for more information. And we also have um, other events coming up. We're focusing a lot on a family engagement, family quality time. We have a family bingo and pizza night coming up. So again, just keep an eye on either laurel.lib.de.us on our website, or you can check out our Facebook page for more information. We're also on Instagram. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate you joining us today. Thank you, uh, our partners downstate at the Laurel Library. I'm really fascinated to hear all of the great work that you guys have going on. I definitely hope that I can make it down there for that pizza party. That really made me hungry right now. Um, you guys are doing great work. I want to say a special thank you to uh, Regina, who was down there with you. Uh, Regina is such a great colleague. She's such a motivational force in the Delaware After School Network and all the great work that she's doing. Hey, uh, Regina. So thank you again um, for, for you guys, for, for what you're doing down there. We hope that youth will continue to come in to just be a part of what you guys are doing down there. Shout out to once again, all of our boys and girls clubs um, down there. And Regina, thank you for just helping to be a, a sponsor, a partner, an advocate, a, a leader for us to bring this all together. We definitely couldn't do this without you. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you guys. And thank you to Dr. Mullen again. Thank you, you Dr. Ken. Mullen. My pleasure. Thank you, thank you. And now we wanna turn our uh, our attention to, once again, literacy is, is for everyone. It, it literacy doesn't have a, a name. It doesn't have a specific culture. It doesn't have a specific language. Books come to us in all uh, languages, in all forms, and we're glad to be, you know, a part of World Read Aloud Day and to bring on some of our uh, our Latino partners, um, specifically Wanda Barrett, who's my colleague here at the United Way of Delaware, and she does a lot of work in the Lat uh, in the Latino community. So, Wanda, thank you for for once again you too being a great colleague. Like no one person can do uh, anything at United Way of Delaware. We proud our, we pride ourselves on being uh, great colleagues and support for one another and always willing to pitch in and cross collaborate anytime that we can. So thank you for all of the work that you're doing um, with United Way of Delaware and being on with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Ken. I'm in wow. I need to go get all these books. I always have story time with my grandkids, be it through Skype because of a situation or what have you, but I am so in, in, in wow with these wonderful stories. Um, Dr. Mullen, that story really hit home. Just Love Me is a book I wanna have. Um, I, the other one from Miss Chase, oh, a lovely book, all of them, right, have an important message. And I do have grandkids of the age that they will appreciate um, <laughs> these books, right? This is a, has been an amazing um, opportunity for us to share the love of reading, right? Ken, Sharonda, myself, we work together, Regina, it, it, in the literacy um, um, efforts, right, to make sure that we are on top of things to provide books for our children and literacy, right? So uh, we're gonna shift a little bit here because we're gonna go now to attend our Hispanic audience. We have a, um, I wanna say some words in Spanish so um, the Hispanic audience can understand those parents that um, can see this show can understand what World Read Out Loud Day represents and what we're doing today. Hola y buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Wanda Barrett. El trabajo para United Way of Delaware. En esta tarde estamos celebrando el mundo lee en voces. ¿Qué significa este día? Este día significa que estamos este, trayendo a autores locales para que puedan leer de sus historias que ellos han creado en libros, literatura, eh, traer el amor a los niños hacia los libros y, y la lectura. 
Tengo conmigo hoy do, una invitada fenomenal del de LACC, el Centro Latino en Wilmington. Tenemos la señora Jackie Rodríguez. Hola Jackie, ¿cómo estás? Hola Wanda, gracias por la invitación. Estamos muy contentos de poder participar y siempre de la mano de United Way que nos apoya tanto en todas las gestiones que hacemos dentro de la comunidad. Hoy oh, es un honor trabajar con el LACC a todo momento. Estamos ahí en lo que podamos asistir, ayudar, sostener. Estamos ahí en mano a mano, ¿verdad, Jackie? Este, cuéntanos, cuéntanos este, qué esfuerzos son este, que se, se, se crean en el departamento. Primeramente, Jackie es, es trabajadora de familia social, ¿verdad? Es tu título. Sí, eh, mi, mi posición en el EDC. Eh, es un programa que trabaja dentro del ACC, del Centro Latinoamericano. Mi posición allí es trabajadora de familia, trabajo de la mano proveyendo cualquier tipo de soporte que requiera los, los eh, padres de familia que están allí con nosotros en el Centro Educativo de Edad Temprana. Es, es fenomenal cuando traemos todos los padres a ser parte de los lo virtual reading angels, los ángeles de la lectura, cuando ellos se, se envuelven en leyéndole a los niños en español, tanto para, los ayuda tanto a ellos como a los niños este, en español e inglés también, ¿verdad? Ya que hacemos tanto, sí. tantos eventos para asegurarnos de no tan solo en la lectura, es que nuestros niños son bilingües, de que puedan entender, tener oportunidad de entender la, la literatura en inglés y español. Estoy bien contenta de tenerte hoy. Háblanos de los, esos esfuerzos que dentro del LACC hacen para la lectura. Sí, Wanda, es bien interesante poder señalar que el Centro Latino está desde 1969 trabajando mm -hmm. fuertemente para ayudar a la comunidad y nuestro programa, que es el Centro de Educación Temprana, este, se enfoca mucho en que los padres pues, se empoderen y que ellos pues, puedan eh, recibir el apoyo de nosotros, pero continuarlo en la casa. Dentro de cada salón de clase en nuestro centro educativo, las maestras trabajan eh, diferentes tipos de estudios. Los niños de Spring School están trabajando, por ejemplo, estudios de, de música y dentro de ese estudio, pues se enfocan en hablar de, de personas ilustres que han aportado en la música. Este, en cada centro educativo también eh, las maestras eh, tienen diferentes libros. Por ponerte un ejemplo, si estamos hablando de un centro dramático, allí ellos pueden encontrar lectura que hablen de los vegetales, de la fruta. Diariamente, dentro del salón de clase, fomentamos y apoyamos la lectura como parte importante en el desarrollo de los niños. Ya lo que tiene que ver directamente con los padres, este, mi, compañera, mi compañera y yo, ¿verdad? Mariana Costa y yo, trabajamos pudiendo, dándole ese soporte a la familia y tenemos un programa de librería. Uh -huh. En este programa también recibimos mucho apoyo de United Way, que siempre pues, nos colabora con libros para nosotros poder ofrecerle a nuestra familia. Este, ellos mensualmente se llevan un libro a casa y pueden continuar el trabajo que están realizando las maestras en el salón de clases. Eh, estos libros siempre tratamos de que sean enfocados en temas educativos que puedan ayudar a ampliar más los conocimientos de los niños. Gracias, Jackie. Qué tercera. Sí, mano a mano trabajamos con el Centro Latino proveyendo libros, eventos, asegurándonos que cualquier, esa llamadita, ¿verdad? Necesito libros. Ahí vamos directamente sin pensarlo ni dos veces, ¿verdad? Gracias, sí. Jackie, por la información. Gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Te agradecemos tanto. Este, seguimos en la lucha de eh, traerle el amor hacia los libros a nuestros niños para que sean bien exitosos en el mañana. Muchas gracias por estar con nosotros. Gracias a ustedes por invitarnos y por siempre pensar en el Centro Latino. Este, estamos muy agradecidos de la oportunidad de poder llevar un mensaje promoviendo la lectura y de que tantas personas se unan y que una sola voz pueda decir lo importante que es la lectura en la vida de un niño. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. 
Ken, where are you? Ken left me alone here. Where are you, Ken? <laughs> so we also invited a local author. His name is Enrique Moras, and he's um um Ken is going to present him now. Um, he has uh, been with us also in the past in this celebration of Read Across America Day. I'm so happy to, um, I guess I'm going to introduce you, right? Enrique, te voy a presentar entre... Go ahead. Adelante. <laughs> Enrique, um, talk a little bit about who you are. Sure. Well, um, let me start first by saying I'm, I'm a publisher and I'm an editor. Um, so I'm involved in the creation of, uh, of uh, books, of children books. Mm -hmm. I work very closely with authors, with illustrators, uh, mainly from Latin America. Uh, we are a Delaware publishing uh, company that focuses on, on publishing works from Latin American authors and illustrators and uh, present them to the Latino community in the U.S. and to um, other folks that like to learn Spanish or speak Spanish. And, um, and recently, we started also to publishing uh, some of those authors in English. Um, basically, what we want is to just to introduce this perspective um, that um, folks bring from, from other places, from other lands, and, uh, and hopefully um, enrich right, the experience uh, as kids explore literature and parents explore literature. When it comes to the Latino community, I think it's a phenomenal way to, to reconnect right, and then to maintain that um, that link with the with the latino culture so that's that's what we do we have a lot of fun i must say it's, it's, i don't call it work it's really just a, a pleasure every day i get up absolutely brings back to mind um dr Mullins's book right that no matter what language no matter where you come from no matter what situation just love yourself right and here we are all together showing unity and diversity right how we can collaborate together being in spanish and we also have a team that um, speaks haitian creole and we try to uh, be di as diverse as possible enrique cuéntanos un poquito de tu este de tu en en español para que te conozca un poquito más la audiencia hispana de quién eres y, y cómo eres este um, cómo llegaste a ser el autor de libros tú mismo claro bueno eh, de nuevo somos una yo soy una editorial tenemos una, una editorial que está eh, aquí localizada en Wilmington Delaware eh, y nos enfocamos en publicar autores latinoamericanos autores e ilustradores latinoamericanos eh, yo no soy autor per se yo soy editor eh, de libros entonces yo trabajo conjuntamente con autores y con ilustradores en el proceso creativo eh, el editor lo que hace es cotejar ideas, intercambiar ideas, proponer ideas, y es un trabajo de grupo entre el ilustrador, el, el autor, el editor, el diseñador. Ese trabajo de equipo tal vez sea de las partes más, más interesantes de este, de este trabajo. Eh, nosotros como nos enfocamos con autores latinoamericanos, pues eh, siempre estamos conectados con gentes de todos lados. A veces tienes autores latinoamericanos que viven en Europa o en Asia, y, y ahí estás. Esa parte, esa diversidad... Eh, me parece fantástica. ¿Cómo llegamos a esto? Bueno, en realidad se llega un poco por, por seguir la, las pasiones que uno tiene. Eh, a mí la literatura me gusta, el arte me gusta, eh, creo que hay mucho por decir. Me gusta la idea de introducir eh, maneras nuevas de contar historias. Eh, nos gustan los libros, lo digo muchas veces, que generan preguntas más que respuestas. Libros que invitan a pensar eh, y que al mismo tiempo pueden tener una parte de humor. Eh, pueden tener una parte graciosa, pero también dejan preguntas. Esas preguntas para mí son, son la savia que mueve todo esto. Uh -huh. eh, el, el niño, el adulto, cuando lee estos libros, este, se genera algún tipo de conversación interesante que hace que el niño piense un poco diferente. Si eso se consigue, me parece que el libro funciona, el arte funciona. Eh, y bueno. Sí, pues Enrique, yo te voy a dejar ahora para que leas el libro que traíste a, a, uh -huh. a presentarnos en el día de hoy. Muy bien. Um, ok, Enrique, I'm going to let you read your book um, now. Estupendo. Our children. Thank you. Muy bien. Bueno, pues el libro que voy a leer es este. Se llama Tiempo de Jugar. La autora es Eva Mastrochiulio. Es autora e ilustradora. Ella es de Argentina. Y lo que voy a hacer es compartir la pantalla, que me parece que se va a ver, las ilustraciones se van a ver mejor. Así que, si acaso, eh, 
Eh, Wanda, tú me dices si por algún motivo no se ve de la manera que queramos, ¿verdad? Espera un segundito. Muy bien. Vamos a ver. Ahí, share. Bueno. Y aquí vamos con el cuento. Dígame si, si no se puede ver. Tiempo de jugar de Eva Master Julia. Como todos los días, Olivia se levanta llena de entusiasmo y grita bien fuerte, ¡A jugar! Juega a lo que quiere, cuando quiere y cómo quiere, sin apuro. A veces parece que no juega, pero sí lo hace. El tiempo es juego. Y ella es tiempo. De repente, tic-tac, tic-tac. Olivia escucha un tic-tac, tic-tac, que se repite sin parar. Tic-tac, tic-tac, tic-tac. Al fin, descubre de dónde viene. Y aunque no sabe qué, qué es ni para qué sirve, se lo prueba. Tic-tac, tic-tac. ¡Qué bueno! piensa Olivia. Eres un genio, dice Olivia. ¿Te puedo pedir un deseo? Soy tu tiempo y vivo en este reloj. Le contesta el reloj. ¿Mi qué? ¿Por qué estás ahí dentro? Debes estar apretado. El reloj grita, ¡a correr! Y Olivia grita, ¡ah! Todo empieza a ir más rápido. ¡Me quiero bajar! Grita Olivia. Olivia solo tiene preguntas. ¿Para qué corres? ¿A dónde vas? ¿Por qué siempre apurado? ¿Por qué siempre escapando? ¿Puedes parar un poco? Y el tiempo sigue corriendo, ¿verdad? ¡Quiero descansar! Grita Olivia. Agotada y sin respuesta, Olivia solo quiere volver atrás, pero eso seguro que no se puede. El tiempo no vuelve para atrás, ¿verdad? ¿Y ahora qué hago? piensa aturdida. De repente algo se le ocurre. ¡Ya sé! ¡Ya sé! Empieza a correr bien rápido y grita, ¡Quiero jugar! ¡Clac! Se saca el reloj. ¡Listo! Y ahora le pregunta al reloj, ¿Jugamos? Con su tiempo y sin más tic-tac, Olivia hace lo que más le gusta. Y ahí la vemos a Olivia haciendo todos los juegos que le gusta hacer sin apuro y tranquila. Hasta que escucha la voz de su mamá. Olivia, es hora de dormir. Y colorín colorado, ese cuento se ha acabado. Y aquí tienen información sobre Eva Mastro Julio. Como decía, actualmente vive en Buenos Aires, Argentina. Es diseñadora gráfica y graduada de la Universidad de Buenos Aires donde también fue docente. En el 2003, o sea, ya hace muchos años, eh, Eva descubrió el mundo de la ilustración y supo que allí quería quedarse. Y ha publicado trabajos en muchos países, eh, incluidos Estados Unidos, España, eh, Chile, Uruguay, España, eh, Colombia. Le gusta mucho trabajar en otros proyectos. Muy bien. Ese es el primero. Y Wanda, voy a leer el segundo, ¿de acuerdo? Yo no te escucho, pero espero que sí, que me estés escuchando. Muy bien. Pues vamos allá. 
El libro de Más Allá eh, fue escrito por Silvia y David uh, Fernández, son dos hermanos, y la ilustradora es Marcel López. Silvia y David Fernández son hermanos que viven en Madrid, en España. Y Marcel López es una ilustradora de, también de España, de la ciudad de Barcelona. Este libro trata, por cierto, de distintas perspectivas que eh, las gentes tienen sobre el más allá. Y es bien cortito y al mismo tiempo bien interesante. A ver qué les parece. Los artistas del Circo Galaxia arriesgan sus vidas a diario. Saltan del trapecio sin red. Tragan fuego y espadas. Vuelan disparados por cañones. Quizás por eso hablen tanto acerca de la muerte. ¿Qué habrá después? ¿Cómo será el más allá? En el, en el circo galaxia hay tantas respuestas como aletas, antenas y hocicos. Cada uno tiene su perspectiva. ¿verdad? Ángel Domingo, el tiburón de las alturas, cree que después de morir, ¿qué creerá? Nos vamos al cielo. Y que allí volvemos a encontrarnos con nuestros seres queridos. La ilustración de Marcet tiene muchísimos detalles. Por eso voy despacito para que puedan ver algo de las ilustraciones. Juanito González, el fantástico Chihuahua Bala. También cree que vamos derechitos al cielo pero que a veces, en determinadas épocas del año, regresamos para visitar a los amigos y celebrar grandes fiestas. Y Fátima, ¿qué creerá Fátima? Fátima, la hechicera del desierto, Piensa que después de morir nos aguarda el Jardín del Edén, un oasis de incontables placeres, ríos de leche y miel y los más deliciosos manjares. Jerónimo, el coyote de las llanuras, opina que después de morir nos convertimos en espíritus y que podemos comunicarnos con los vivos a través de los cuatro elementos, aire, agua, fuego y tierra. Ramsés, el escarabajo sobre ruedas, Cree que emprendemos un emocionante viaje repleto de aventuras por el misterioso reino de los muertos. Mientras que Federica, la marmota sin miedo, está convencida de que volvemos a nacer y que nuestra vida se repite exactamente igual una y otra vez y otra vez. Y otra, y otra. Pema Houdini, la escapista, también cree que vivimos un montón de vidas, aunque diferentes y reencarnados en distintos animales. Podemos ser una vaca, un mosquito, un avestruz. Frida, la reina del trapecio, piensa que después de morir continuamos presentes a través de nuestras obras y en el recuerdo de los demás. Siddhartha, el maestro de la cuerda floja, ese es el elefante, ¿verdad? 
espera alcanzar el nirvana y pasar a formar parte de la luz cósmica que mantiene unidos a todos los seres del mundo. Leo, el león de acero, cree que después de morir, nuestra energía sigue brillando para siempre en el universo junto a las demás estrellas. ¿Y tú? ¿Qué crees? ¿Qué creéis vosotros? Y este es el fin. Colorín colorado, este cuento se ha acabado. Aquí tienen información sobre Silvia y David y Marcel López. Y ahí se acaba el cuento. Y bueno, tengo otro que podría, pero voy a primero consultar y ver si está todo bien. Muy bien. Ken, Ken did, that, yes. uh, did that show all right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you, thank you, awesome. Enrique, for, for coming on to be a part of this event, to, to share um, a story in your native tongue. I think that's what literacy is all about, just being able to reach people where they are, to be able to share these amazing and awesome stories. So thank you once again. Thank you, uh, Miss Wanda, for all of the great work that you're doing um, in the Latino community and for being such a great colleague. And thank you, Miss Jackie, as well from LACC for all of the great work that you're doing uh, down there to inspire uh, the youth and the next generation of readers. Um, this has been a fun-filled, eventful day. We hope that you all were inspired. World Read Aloud Day was about just taking a pause and being able to just hear really great stories, to be inspired, to read. Um, we heard from a lot of different authors. We heard a lot of great books today. I hope that you all enjoyed it. I know this was a great experience for me, and I'm glad to say that we have one more amazing guests all the way from New York City. He's amazing. He loves to swing to your local town. There he is, Spidey. What's happening, man? Nothing much, Ken. How's it going in Delaware? It's going great, man. I, I'm so glad that you were able to, to take a few minutes just to talk about the importance of literacy and also just the importance of, of how reading is your superpower. We really appreciate you taking the time to talk uh, to our viewers today. So tell us why, why literacy is so important. Well, to quote a great friend of mine, the more that you read, the better storyteller that you can be. And this is where you're gonna get all your many champions from the Avengers to, dare I say, the Justice League, They are more than just pillars in any kind of literary structure. They are the heroes, and they are the foundation of who could actually develop a character. Thank you, Spidey, once again for just taking the time out. Um, once again, we, we started off with, uh, with Anna. She was all the way from Arendelle. And now we're just here with you to be able to close out the program. So thank you. Um, and is there anything else that you would like to share with our, our students who are still watching? Just how important it is for them to just practice reading. I know you have to practice uh, web shooting on a daily basis. And I know you have some challenges uh, in some of your other movies about just the growing pains of growing up being a superhero. So just talk to us, you know, once again, just some final closing comments to inspire our youth uh, to read. Well, one inspiration I've always managed to get up from reading, it is a break away from the daily grind. I mean, I get I get bombarded with villains left and right. I get I get a news blurts from the Daily Bugle just always putting me down. But picking up a book is an excellent escape from the daily from the daily grind. Thank you. I, those words were, were really inspiring just for, for how I interpret it, just for students, just to take a break and to pick up a book. Um, it allows you to escape. Um, it takes you to many different places. 
Uh, you build your vocabulary. You learn new words. So Spider-Man, thank you again for just being a part of this process. And my co-host, Sharonda Everett, thank you for working behind the scenes, getting everyone on screen and off screen. Uh, just thank you for all the work that you're doing here at United Way as well. You're on mute. This has been amazing to see Anna, then Spider-Man. Like, I feel so lucky to have been here. To have such major uh, celebrities in the building. So I really do hope that everyone who was watching the uh, Boys and Girls Clubs, um, all the uh, Bancroft, um, and we have Town Point, um, that everybody, Girls Inc., um, everyone who, who came on and watched that you enjoyed hearing all the wonderful stories from um, these amazing authors and seeing um, some superheroes today. That, that Yes, indeed. And also thank our, our library partners at the Wilmington Library, the Woodlawn Library, Route 9, Dover, and Laurel. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to be a part of this initiative for World Read Aloud Day. Thank you to all of our amazing authors uh, who came on to share their stories and also a story for Black History Month. We wanna to continue to celebrate reading, literacy, and also Black history throughout the, uh, throughout the rest of February. Um, I also would like to thank the Campaign for Grade Level Reading and the Community of Excellence for once again, just being great uh, partners and literacy champions. Um, and, and that's about it for me, Sharonda. If you have any more uh, closing words. Uh, you already thanks. said it. I want to thank yep. Regina uh, and yep. Wanda, I want, you know, our colleagues who help make all of these things possible. Um, uh, the Delaware After School Network, um, Dean, for your sponsorship. Um, and I want to thank Del One um, for your sponsorship. And again, just all of the authors who came on and shared um, your amazing stories, um, the, the, what inspired you, and hopefully um, our viewers were inspired as well. Um, and uh, uh, Dwayne, all the way in Chicago. All the way in um, Chicago, yep. Yes, so making this truly, truly uh, world read out loud day. Um, and, so, yep. and, and thank you for um, for definitely always championing uh, literacy and making sure that our kids are getting what they need to be successful. Yep, thank you, thank you. And also thank, uh, shout out to the Delaware Blue Coats who were our library ambassadors for this event. Um, if you hadn't had the opportunity to get over to the field house, please get over to the field house and support your Delaware Blue Coats. So thank you for them for uh, for helping the champion literacy as well. And that's all. Please continue to read, read this each and library. every day, students. Visit your library, support your libraries. If you're in the community and your organization and you want to connect with us here at United Way of Delaware, uh, we were able to put our information up, but I'll share with you once again. You can reach me at klivingston at uwde.org. And also you can uh, reach out to Sharonda at severett at uwde.org as well. So once again, thank you for being a part of this and enjoy the rest of your evening.